I've learned from yesterday. I'm ready. Yeah, yeah. It's a great course. There's two other ones. There's Jimmy Oh, it looks Clay close, but you got to put it on the ground. That, just missed. No, you just got it. Just got it? You just got it. Hell yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> Everyone's coming up for roses today. Hinch. Wow, that really set the tone, I think, for the rest of the trip. What a wild, fun, casual, cool, funky place. The course was originally laid out by old Tom Morris. It was later redesigned by Alistair McKenzie. I think that's a pretty good one-two punch. Uh, it's been touched by a number of architects over the years, most recently by Martin Hawtrey. It's just pure, absolute pure golf. You love it in the dunes. It's, it's evolved a lot over the years, but what they've done with it is preserve so much of what makes Irish golf unique. You don't really necessarily need to attribute it to one person. You just go out and enjoy an incredible walk by the sea. I think a lot of places in the UK and Ireland, you get obviously those stretches of coastline, but what you don't always get is the peaks at the town and the people hiking on the, or walking on the beaches or you know the, the kids going out for like a surf school or any of that stuff. So it's like this great mix of these cliffs, these beaches, the surfers, the town, and just like a world-class golf course as well. Yeah, La Hinch was, was awesome. So just a little uh, you know memento for everybody here. Thank you. <laughs> Look at that. that. Oh God. <laughs> Look at the other side. Oh! He's not very creative. You know what? When I make my first birdie, I'm gonna... So you're not gonna get to drink that? <laughs> <laughs> Alan's gonna fit in well. Yeah, Huey's caddy. Yeah, Huey's on his way here. I took a caddy because A, that's the TC way, and B, whenever I'm playing a world-class golf course. It just allows me to look at the golf course a little bit more and have a little bit more time to just soak it all in and enjoy it. Hi, I'm Huey. I'm caddy at Lynch. I've been for 57 years. 57 years? Yes. Which means you started when you were when? Seven. Seven? Mm -hmm. Sometimes you get lucky, sometimes you don't. At La Hinch, I got really, really lucky. Just in case there's a few Bob riding on this, okay? And Huey doesn't want to tell the boys. All our pathways here in La Hinch Golf Course, they're all a grass pathway. You stand up on the third, the sixth, the seventh. You will not be able to see the fairway in front of you. Use the pathway as a guideline to the fairway. It's the easiest way to get around the hinge golf board. The course is in super condition, greens are super, so go out and enjoy yourselves here today. Hey, we're doing a uh, toast for birdies? Yeah. Oh, Before we got the full spectrum of conditions, even that day at La Hinch, it was pouring rain when we, when we pulled up in the bus. It got super windy. That put a damper on some of our audio from the day. Yes, sir. Hey, right, Birdie. Hey, hey! We will not be blanked on this trip. Blind, another blind one. Yeah, and the next one, and the next one, and the next one, <laughs> and the next one. <laughs> What's going to be the, the key to today? Well, it's if you can control the wind. Yeah. You know, and if you judge it properly, like we hit a, a 120 shot there, but as soon as he hit it, the wind died. So that's why it was long. It's over the green. I, we're process based. Yeah. Hit, hit a good shot. Trust my man. It was a good shot. The wind died. There's nothing we can do about that. <laughs> no. infamous early walk from Solly 
it was you had probably about a 40 foot putt i, I thought i chunked the putt I, I actually there might be a little divot on the right side of that third green i thought it was gonna be about 20 feet short Fourth hole, it's it's unlike any golf hole I've played anywhere in the world. Here, can you talk us through the Klondike here? What are we what are we looking at? Big hill in the middle of the fairway. Gosh, the Klondike hole. The Klondike was nuts. That's four green there, in the distance. Okay, and that dune is what we're gonna be hitting over. The tee shot feels like you're hitting into kind of like this X Games super pipe. Shout out to J.R. Smith. Between the green and where you're hitting your second shot from, there's just a huge dune in your way. Yeah, just just a cool hole. You don't just you know you don't get that plan here. Ah, uh, that anyway. You'll be okay. Be up on two T, maybe. Might be the mega angle. <laughs> exactly. So you finish, and it's like, okay, now that I kind of see it, I'd love to just go back and play it again and play it again. Just a wild, a wildly cool second shot. It's one of the most unique shots you'll ever hit. Just a, a totally blind approach, second shot into a par five, right over this just massive, massive dune right in the middle of the fairway. Oh, big, good. Couldn't hit any straighter. All right, got the thumbs up from up top. So this is Oliver, he, uh, he's got one of the coolest jobs in golf. He sits atop the dune there on the fourth hole, directs traffic for the crossover for the 18th hole, as well as kind of helps you give you a line and gives you a signal as to where your ball ends up and uh, basically keeps everyone safe and uh, helps you over this, this massive obstruction in the middle of the fairway. It's cool, he's got this little hut actually in the hill that he can go camp out in, get away from the rain, get away from the wind. The Greta for Eagle! All right, you always hit short and right and should bounce right in. About long and left. Follow it right up with the fifth hole, the Dell completely blind, par three, maybe an even bigger dune right in front of the green. You can't even see the green. Oh, dude, the Dell. Um, <laughs> One of the top two or three coolest holes I've ever played in my life. One of the coolest golf holes I've ever played. Say 165, 170. There's no flag up there, is that right? There is a flag in the middle of the green, the other side of that. I don't, I haven't the x-ray eyes, I can't see it through the hill. You know, if you approach this shot with the wrong attitude, you might think it's dumb, you might think it's silly or gimmicky, but it's actually quite a thrill to hit and execute a really blind shot. You don't know where your ball is going to end up. You don't, you're not, you're not tempted to look up at the target. You just got to hit the shot, execute it, trust that it's going to be in a good place, trust that you got the number right, and Coming around the dune and finding out where your ball is is actually kind of thrilling. Favorite hole at the hinge tomorrow? Yeah, it's got to be the depth. Yeah. Uh, it's just an unbelievable golf hole. I mean, if, if any of us designed it today, we've got a business. Do Americans ever complain about this hole? Americans complain about every hole. <laughs> <laughs> Even at that white rock. Randy can probably see you. Can you see it, Randy? <laughs> That looks pretty good. Is it true that caddies sometimes put balls in the hole? 40 years ago, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you've never done that? You said you've been here for 57 years. I was here. <laughs> you've never done it? No, the Americans at four of them have come. No, that's not it. Uh, four of them have come. They were trying to set one guy up so they'd get a caddy and put him in my head. It was their fault, really. <laughs> I was here, I know. <laughs> Good stuff! Congratulations on your hole in one. Thank you. Hey, thanks. Congratulations. Cool. That was cool you guys could be here to see that. That's cool. That's an honor. That's man. very cool. And there's some actual drama and suspense when you come around the dune. Did my ball go in the hole? Am I 30 yards over the green like Icarito likes to do? It's, it's, I've never seen anything like this shot. I know we said that about number four, but I've honestly never seen anything like number five either. I'd be lying if I didn't say I hit it exactly where, which never happens. It's a similar feeling. To, I've only made one ace, and uh, it was a similar feeling. Yours caught this side of the hill and ran back there. Let's see. Yeah. No, no. Nothing. Ah. Uh, 
need to get this close for Cheeky! <laughs> oh, soft, soft hands. <laughs> Three, three. Uh, no. We're process based. Process couldn't have been better there. God, that's. A, <laughs> I feel like an asshole. Uh, watching you guys play it in the second group was really cool to see those balls come in. Look, I know they're trying to put the drone out of, out of Neil's reach, but that's pretty far where he hits it. Like, that was pretty good. That might have to get up. Right about here, where I'm going to start walking it in. Well, what the hell? <laughs> <laughs> damn it. Yes. Birdie at the Dell. The fourth and fifth holes get a lot of attention and deservedly so, but honestly, I think the sixth hole is my favorite of any of them. What? Is that any good, B-roll boy? You can't really see where you're going off the tee. You got to use the walkway to line yourself up. It's not a driver. Maybe it's a long iron or a three wood. And you come around the corner to the left and there it sits at the bottom of the hill, the sixth green ocean in the background, surfers in the background, it's, it is a scene. So we're, we're six holes in, what do you think? It's, it's awesome, I mean, it's, it's just links, it's Ireland, it feels, everything feels so natural, um, it's very cool. Man, Randy, how tall are you? It's this, it's this fresh sea air, I gained seven inches. How's this course treating you? Yeah, this is one of my favorites. I think it's like the, I would call it the Irish North Berwick. Very quirky in all the, all the best ways. First time around, you're gonna be a little confused. Second time around, it's gonna be as much fun as you can have. This is a shower and a grower. <laughs> I think this is, this is a proper golf course. We got a wardrobe change over here. <laughs> Tom, we got the tropical weather going on. We can organize the weather. That's the good <laughs> Even when a call now, <laughs> call now. <laughs> Can't find your whiskey. It's in here somewhere. Not great over here, bud. Hey! There's a birdie! You, you don't know, but Hell you yeah. not be able to make Woo! it. <laughs> <laughs> now you celebrate those putts. Now I celebrate them. Thank you. Oh, let's get the whiskey out. I'm telling you, you big Randy fans are going to be in for a treat this season. He's not going to play the role anymore of the cursed putter, and he's going to drive it up a Nat's ass pretty much all week long. Flash face technology. Got that? <laughs> Here's uh, Tron marking his ball with an ibuprofen. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> seen that one before or no? <laughs> 57 years, I bet you never seen that one. <laughs> Huey was the best caddy I've ever had anywhere, unequivocally. Big, the biggest thing was the green reading. You're four inches in the red. Okay. What's, uh, what's the best round you've seen out here? You've caddied for? Uh, Andrew McGee, the tour pro. Yeah. In very heavy wind from the tips. 400 the first day, 200 the second day. Yeah. Went to the British Open the following week, couldn't eat did he? Do it, 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 do it! Oh! Oh! Babe! Like 
Birds. The 13th hole, drivable par four. It's one of the one of the many feature holes on the back nine. And uh, I think it's only about 265 or so for us, but with different wind directions, it can play a lot of different ways. Caddies will tell you, stay left, stay left. There's loads of room left, but there's a big, big dip on the right of mine. We call it the mine. Oh my. <laughs> I won't tell you what we normally call it, <laughs> because we're on camera here. We actually did, as a group, kind of do a little damage on this hole. Bird. Nice too. Up and down from 270. There you go. <laughs> Good stroke, Randy. Woo! Did you get Did you get a putting lesson back there? Yeah, you gave me one. That's I'm not, I'm not gonna pull it. That, gonna pull it. That's scummy. He's 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 trying to make Huey proud. So I was quite taken by La Hinch. It just felt so different than a lot of what you get here in the States. La Hinch is easily my favorite course to be played on the trip. It's it's not really even a close call. If somebody offered me a chance to move to La Hinch tomorrow, I think I would take it. I think the golf course is about as much fun as you can possibly have. I think the surf vibe over there is about as cool as it gets. I think the pubs are phenomenal. Uh, it's just, uh, it puts you in a fantastic mood. All right, what do we got on the finisher? Par five. Par five. Longish. Longish. Five hundred into the wind. Line <laughs> was good, a little harder. Very good. Hey, very. <laughs> the guys in the caddy shack come out and they say, "Huey's smiling." He never smiles. What, what the hell did you guys do to him out there? <laughs> that was awesome. That was a tough way to straight. How's it going? Nice to meet you. Friend, that was awesome. <laughs> what a pleasure, man. That yeah. You made that so much more fun. So I think what made the whole experience of La Hinch even better was the Guinness that we had afterwards. Yeah, that could be pretty good. Short dog. Is it short? Short dog. It's short. A short dog. 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 I laid out. I Trump choked it, I think. It's something about the, you know, the mental aspect of being in Ireland, being in a really cool pub, um, the environment, the people that you're with that make the experience great. This is the best Guinness I've ever had. See how close the kegs are to the tap? Yeah, so the, the, the less time is spent in the pipes, the better the Guinness is going to be. So the, this one seems super tight. Yeah. I think this one's super tight. Because this one just hits, this, this one just hits different from the ones we had yesterday. So not sponsored. No, no, yeah, yeah. Hashtag yeah, not sponsored. Don't, don't do it. We don't care if you buy it or not. <laughs> we'll see if he's really Irish or not. Oh, he panicked. At the end. Oh, oh, you panicked. Oh, you panicked. Yeah. Yeah. Wait, wait, wait. Hang on a sec. Wait till it settles. It's Look on this. The other way. Look on this side. Oh! I think he did. I think he's got it. Gerald's Gerald's got got it. It. But the two Spider different lines. sides are different. That's interesting. <laughs> <laughs> if any part of the ball is touching the green, it's on the green and you can wait. mark it. Here, no, it's in temp. What side? Yeah, what side are you yeah. trying to look at? Yeah. Do you I feel like good. You, okay. you think it's I good. think it's good. Yes, All right, well then, hey, cheers. 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 For my first, first time, long time. Six, seven, eight birdies for our group, so that's 23. If we're counting eagles, it's five. $23 in the pot per person. Pot is every time anybody makes a birdie on the trip, everybody's got to put a, everyone owes a euro. And the person that makes the last birdie of the entire trip gets the entire pot. Have you always been a Liverpool bar? Uh, no, just this season. <laughs> <laughs> Who won the league last year? <laughs> I think we were even a Leicester City bar. Uh, yeah. There a couple of years ago. Yeah, 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 yeah. Do those look good? Uh, they are, yeah, they're pretty much on the money. Can I ask you actually, what makes a good Guinness? Okay, a couple of things to make a good Guinness. Your glass. We have a washing machine there that has just got water, hot water in it. No detergent, no rinse aid, no nothing. Yeah. Two, we have our Guinness under the counter. All the other beers come from a room in here, but one Guinness tap, which is this one, comes from under the counter. And then it's temperature. It has to be cold. How cold? 
Well, this is on about three degrees, you know? So that's pretty, that's perfect, you know? If you, you ever get a pint of milk, get two pints of milk, right? Yeah. In a shop. Leave one out, leave the other one in the fridge. Pour two glasses then after about an hour. They taste totally different. Even though they're the same milk, probably came from the same cow, you know? So. That's what I've been saying. Cool, yeah. cold, cold beer. beer. How so often, cold Guinness is often, better than cool Guinness. I like tonight, how often do you have to change the keg on the Guinness? Oh, well. Because they're Man United fans, they're all drinking beer. They're not drinking Guinness at all. <laughs> <laughs> if there was a hurling game on, oh, yeah. or a rugby game on, you know, we've changed barrels, like literally gone through two barrels in the 10 minute interval, you know? <laughs> <laughs> because they all like wait and they all come up together. You know what I'm saying? Oh, you guys thought it was going in for a minute. Here we go! I don't know how this part works. No frills, we'll just do it real quick. So you did it. <laughs> Fucking did it. <laughs> if you haven't filled a Guinness, I'll give you a chance of filling a Guinness. So what's the what's this the, is the main tap. This is the main tap, right? Pulling it into the glass, right? You guys can heckle him as he's going. Yeah. yeah. Heckle him nice and softly into the glass, right? Yeah. You're gonna pull this right forward yeah. and you're gonna be relaxed doing it. Yeah. Right? And I I bet you're gonna be like this, coming in. Just try and be relaxed. Be cool. Yeah. Be cool. Yeah. Yeah, now put it right down straight. Now engage the room, say how's it going there, and you hey, gotta look relax. Yeah, oh, hey, yeah. no, 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 you gotta keep going. No, no, hang on, this guy's oh, too, far too far away from the glass, too this far away. Bring it up to the glass. Hey, too far away from yeah. the glass. You don't want the beer to just fall into the glass. You want, you to, want it to be up against the glass. Slide it, of course. All right, let's see how you do it here. And hit the OB stick. Oh, look exactly. how relaxed he is. <laughs> look how relaxed he is. <laughs> One get us. Look at the angle. Man. It's not coming as fast. You can be nice and relaxed and just wash straight away and let go. Oh! oh. oh. No. No. That was okay, almost a disaster. You would have drank You brought it on the full floor. Oh, I didn't even hear it. <laughs> Patty, one, one more. more. yeah. <laughs> you see what happened when you guys come in? They all got thirsty. We're trying to get a taxi home from the 19th and struggling a little bit. And before we know it, we are in the back seat of the owner's car. You sure this is yeah, not a no, problem? No, this is perfect. I take one more. And he's giving us a ride home from the bar while his bar was still open. I got a message from Mark McGrath on Instagram. Is it that Mark McGrath from Sugar Ray? That I, I sent, a, I said I posted the video of us behind the bar. He said, Patty is the man. He'll drive you home from the pub as well. <laughs> <laughs> Two minutes later, Two this minutes is where we are. <laughs> I'll just drive you guys home. We walked into that place as total strangers from a different country and we leave with the bar owner I think this whole season is going to be filled with things where you say that only in Ireland would this happen. And that was maybe the, the most significant one to me. No, boys. Pleasure. Unbelievable. Okay. Hey, thank you so thank much, man. Thank you so much. much. It was such okay. a pleasure to meet you. Appreciate pleasure. it, sir. My thank pleasure. We'll be sending people yes. to your bar. Oh, don't worry. You're glad. Thank you so much. Good, good luck. And thank you. Can you come to the streets on you? Is that any good? <laughs> His daughter drove the other car. I think they went on a little bit of a joy ride behind us. I'm not really sure what happened. I, we got out of that car and Randy's face was just white. Oh my God. Does that work for you guys? Or She's no? going like 80, I think, on some of those little roads. That's decent, huh? Spanish Spanish point. Spanish no, point. No, I got you. Know I got that B roll. <laughs> well, we haven't. We don't have any A roll. We need some A roll. You know, you need to learn a little something about A roll. Let's see, Kristoff, chill. When we travel for golf trips, we don't spend a lot of time in the hotels or wherever we stay. But what makes it special and memorable is staying somewhere that has a history. Um, Aoife O'Malley is my name. I grew up just a couple of miles from here. I'm actually a primary school teacher, but uh, my husband uh, ropes me in at the, the weekends and uh, in the summer holidays and stuff working here. The place is great. Neil, we're bunking. <laughs> God, this is like MTV Cribs. Cribs camera. The girls, get out of here. Get out of here. Get out of here. <laughs> Spanish Point itself has the whole the history with the, the Spanish Armada, the, the fleet of, sh of ships that would have shipwrecked in, in Spanish Point. You meet the owners, they often cook you breakfast, and it just, again, it feels like that local experience. Hearing that accent and hearing how much it means for them to be, for you to be in their house, it, it, it just takes you, takes everything to the next level. The house then, you know, dates back to 1830. I suppose it, it means a lot of a lot of things to a lot of people, I suppose, you know, so um, to do it up, I suppose we felt kind of a, a responsibility to to do a good job and, and I suppose pay homage to the, the old house, you know, and yes. hopefully we did that. It's also like pretty cool to stay in like a castle and stuff like that, so. <laughs> Next week on Taurus Sauce. I had heard that Adair was supposed to be spectacular 
and it didn't disappoint. It was really, really refreshing to me to see the Strat Boys put their feet up a little bit. People, people think they know the Strat Boys, all right? I know you guys have seen the series. There's a whole other side of them, and you're just getting a sliver, just a taste of that in this episode. There you go, he's showing off here. Yeah, he's, he's <laughs> kind of spooking me a little bit. Yeah, you're all right. We're off. Here we go. Who are we rooting for again? Manu. The red team. Manu. Who's winning the match? I got instincts. I didn't tell you who to score. So, so so we need, do you, do you do you need a shit to give it a go. Gerard's done it. Never oh seen bar taps. Like, beer taps. But, like, the spirits are, you know, you can take a lot of shots out of those. That's what, you know what I call that? In a place that's been around 100 years, they're still innovating. And we really like to see Very that kind of that kind of disruption. <laughs> Listen, you know what? It, they're they're diversifying their business, and um, who could blame them, right? I, I I like to see that kind of thought leadership.